from everyone. So um, Aviva, please make your comment. And I work at 1788 Claremont Road, Decatur. I also am the builder of the Children's Playhouse at the Wild Center, 435 Oak View Road, and I work there. I applaud and appreciate the city's efforts in creating a stronger tree ordinance diligently and with hard work and inclusion of community. Observing the power and importance of trees in our lives is the first step towards preserving them. Not everyone here tonight has that same perspective. Most of us do, but I hope to add mine to further stress the values of trees with their intact root systems and biome. I have four main points tonight and I appreciate your patience as I just take a couple of minutes to make each of them. What a journey we are on as we become collectively more aware of our space and the ecosystem and how to feed this nurturing web of consciousness instead of devour it. My first point is how removing trees affects our spirit. Even those of us who mean well tonight are talking percentages and numbers and not putting on the record that these trees are more than numbers, they too have souls. What if we saw trees more as people, parents, grandparents of humanity? The past couple of years, we've seen some political leaders supporting the removal of monuments because of issues of oppression. We've seen businesses get looted in the desperate attempt for change and equity balancing of our society. I think we all know that the deeper issue amidst property rights is that before we settled here, this land was taken care of respectfully by indigenous people and thus the imbalance we face today in fixing environmental stress. So I think the task we see before us and in all future generations is finding balance between claiming ownership of land and accepting stewardship responsibility of the land you stake claim to. I have no shame in being an American. I am so proud to live in this free country. I also am very aware of the wisdom of indigenous practices regarding regenerative living and permaculture, which have all but been neglected. For the city of Decatur to acknowledge this wisdom might involve accepting this or an even stronger tree ordinance. In the January 11th meeting, it was brought up by members of commission that a stronger ordinance would add to the cost of home ownership and would discourage class diversity. But I would challenge that that is twisting the deeper class issue of losing our connection with our land and our roots in the first place. It crossed my mind that to get clear environmental answers we need, wouldn't it be wise and educational to consult with an indigenous elder or elders, perhaps inviting indigenous leaders to be part of the city environmental planning to put even more common sense into societal and community ordinance planning. This would make the city of Decatur an even safer zone as we are already a safe zone protecting residents from ice. To acknowledge not just the ancient practices, practices of the first people, but to recognize and honor all of our continual connection to the land and waters is essential. It's about continually giving giving back to the land we use. We all know our lives depend on it. And we really have a lot to learn on how to coexist with these magnificent giving trees and the land and the streams we need them. I'm grateful to all who have helped nurture the land and life of the trees before me. One indigenous practice in making any decision on messing with the earth is asking the question, how will this affect seven generations from now? For the next several hundred years of life, not just the year 2037 that Decatur is planning for. There is so much we have to learn from each other. Now is the time to be humble and receive help with these important decisions. My second point is about how developers are replanting trees as opposed to leaving plots of trees and how devastating I see this practice to be. You know what I'm talking about, the single trees and parking lots surrounded by concrete. I'm not saying to, have, to not have trees, but I think they should be less caged. When I see these trees, it reminds me of animals in the zoo. They are not truly free. If we use the analogy of trees being like people, it'd be like taking a clone of me, putting me in the zoo with boundaries that limit my root system and saying I'm replanted when really I'm a prisoner. No children to climb me, no wild plants to grow next to me, and most people barely even look at me. When we observe these caged trees, we are witnessing and normalizing the destruction of a magical life energy potential of trees. It's like destroying the magical in you and replacing you with a robotic you. What's the point? It's way better to leave the trees that we can. And if we do have replanting allowances, there's got to be a way to encourage more realistic biodiverse existence for our tree families. My third point involves encouraging alternative building techniques that honor our trees and their natural ecosystems. Earlier, I spoke about how I built the Cobb Playhouse in Oakhurst. I built it not only as a special place for children to cherish, but as an example of how a strong mud house 
could be resilient. A compound can also be temperature regulated. It was actually um, my only choice of building this way because right now building codes don't allow me to build a home out of top. So I'm relying on the awareness of future generations to create this reality through their own awareness of possibilities and what feels good. But there are many ways that not having this knowledge exemplifies why people have issues with the tree ordinance. It's all they know. I bring this up because at the planning commission, there was concern about falling trees, destroying someone's home. A couple of years ago in a storm, two huge, huge trees fell on the playhouse. I took pictures right afterwards and you wouldn't believe how little damage was done. I was able to climb on top of the tree and sit securely on the house. It was leaving the house and the elements that left it vulnerable. Um, my teacher also built a Cobb studio in her backyard, a hurricane, flattened the house, but the Cobb studio survived. So the reason why I'm saying this is if we're more comfortable with how resistant our homes are from tree falls, maybe we would be less scared of trees. I mention this as a plea for the passing of this ordinance because it's not only the earth and material that exemplifies resistance to our trees falling in storms, but it's also their circular structure that survives all kinds of weather because the impact is distributed evenly through the whole building. The many joints in buildings are their weakest points and that's what causes them to collapse when impacted. Right now, my dream to implement earth and building techniques, including circular structures and passive solar designs are virtually impossible to realize because the money behind scrape and build developers is deep and in the pockets of a lot of people. This locks in a system where there isn't a lot of choice or practicality in designing apartment buildings and homes in these innovative ways. A bigger city society's needs to build quickly and cheaply shatters our inner innovative and creatives. It becomes a huge uphill battle. Essentially, my urban earth and building dreams have been swallowed up by consumer-based industrial building techniques. It's, it's a systematic issue, I believe. May I, uh, excuse me. Um, mm -hmm. I've really been pretty patient about the length of your of your remarks. I know no, you I'm have sorry. One I, I wrote this out. I'm trying to be as quick as possible. No, it's like it, two I'm, more I'm just wondering if maybe you could, instead of reading all of that, um, restrict the last point, your remark, as it pertains to what we're looking at tonight, the tree ordinance, rather than um, we're not really considering what homes were built of and that sort of well, thing right now. Yeah, so. absolutely, Mayor. Thank you. The reason I'm saying is it's only when people value trees enough and their relations with them would urban mainstream natural building even be a possibility. And in order to get people thinking that way, we need a strong ordinance. Um, I just don't know if everyone's aware of this education and I feel it helps to educate that. Maybe I don't need to. Maybe you all know about how, how and why the temperature shift is happening. But when you cover the ground with concrete, we're losing the temperature uh, abilities. Um, so my last point is we need to be careful about the Board of Appeals loopholes. The use of concrete and commercial development is given variances that borderline criminal. Many of the builders know that extreme use of these materials is unnecessary, but it's making people money. Money greed is a force to be reckoned with. Um, okay, let me just skip down to here. Um, it's a chain, it's a chain reaction that starts when building the foundation of a structure, literally and figuratively, everything from the ground up is affected from the starting point. Um, we need to be diligent about not catering to businesses who are pushing harmful industrial building techniques. Um, and relating to some questions here tonight, there have been cases of citizens cutting down trees at their discretion, which have then caused flooding in their neighbor's house. So this ordinance protect, protects everyone. And if you wanna take a tree down for a porch, there's an option to replant somewhere else. It doesn't have to be in your own land. And also just for everyone who doesn't know the exact numbers, impervious surfaces are the main cause of storm water runoff because on a one fourth acre lot with one inch of rain, you create almost 7,000 gallons of rain. And when this hits an impervious surface, it becomes fast moving storm water runoff, which causes that river and whatnot. I'm ending with a couple of questions. What happens if we don't pass this tree ordinance? 
And will the city be stuck where it is instead of growing with the need for more awareness of permaculture? Will it be another 10 years before you'll consider revisions on the tree ordinance? These are important and valid questions. And if you vote no, then the public deserves to have these answers. Thank you for your patience and your time. Thank you. Um, I believe Neil Norton, um, Neil, I will unmute you and um, if you can uh, make your comment, please. Yeah, Neil Norton, 135. I asked the city commission to approve the true ordinance as, as it is in front of you. I don't envy your position. It's a difficult position to be in. It's, we're kind of at a changing time. Uh, you know, when do the rights of property end and the rights of nature begin? Uh, we live in a unique ecosystem, the Piedmont ecosystem. We live at the headwaters of four watersheds. Uh, so everything that comes, leaves Decatur is because of Decatur. So people have discussed imperviousness. As far as I know, uh, trees are the best uh, anchors of perviousness that I know. And it's a great way to protect trees. I think I, at last, I just want to bring up this idea of the economics of this. I mean, I think you're aware of it, but when properties are selling at $400 a square foot, there's such an intense pressure on the land and people are going to want to do a lot. I've had many of my friends, uh, I've actually been tempted myself at that value of leaving Decatur and letting whatever happens happen. And I've seen it happen over and over and the land gets stripped and then they're out of the city with that land value. And then other people have come in um, that may not really honor the trees. So uh, I actually, I was on the board of appeals for six years as well. Um, I do have great faith in that process. It doesn't, it's not always perfect, but there is a, there is a, 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 there is that process that people can appeal. But back to the economic argument, I, I want to state that the canopy loss fee may seem high, but if you're going to want to incentivize people to build differently, it has to be high. And it really isn't that high relative to the land. I mean, if you look at one tree, uh, using the current calculation of canopy loss fee. And really, I'm most concerned about land disturbance permits. That's my main concern. I am an arborist. I look at people's trees. I've looked at hundreds of trees in Decatur, and I'm always so impressed with the uh, stewardship of city of Decatur residents towards their trees. Uh, but, um, yeah, so I guess in closing, I just want to say I asked you to approve it. I know there were a couple other points I had to make, but I want to also make sure we move on. Thank you. Thank you. Um... Thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. And thank you, Zachary Hansen, for quoting me in the AJC. And thank you to all of Decatur for passing this tree ordinance. I got a question. Look out for part three. Uh, explaining what exactly this means. See you all in the next one. Please subscribe and like and comment if you're into all this stuff. I appreciate you.